let's just uh let's un let's unpick this um volatility and risk are kind of have they've tended to be conflated and i don't know if that is um part of modern portfolio theory the harry markowitz type way of thinking where you've got sort of a distribution of returns and the further away you get from the mean the more volatile it is the more risky it is by you know by definition so you're saying that's not quite the case and i think it, it's an interesting take and i tend to agree because when i look at bitcoin relative to these other assets i go i wouldn't want to be in commercial real estate for the money in the world there's massive execution risk and vacancies and maintenance and taxes and god knows what else let's just let's unravel that little story there because um i think people will be quite keen to hear it if they don't know it already about risk v volatility yeah just how like how something that is volatile is not necessarily risky yeah and vice versa too so with Bitcoin, we have a very unique position that personally, it's a misunderstood technology. So I put Bitcoin as a technology, not a, not a money or an asset. It's a technology first. And then we've ascribed you know, asset, asset values and a monetary network above the technology. And because it's a technology first, you know, a lot of people have huge difficulties understanding technology and, you know, the benefits of it and what it can bring. And Probably no greater example than uh, Bitcoin's number one marketer, Paul Krugman, talking about the fax machine uh, and the internet, you know, will be dead because we've got fax machines. So it, it's grossly misunderstood. And this is where, you know, humans have a proclivity to ascribe much more risk to things that they don't understand. And that's purely driven by our most basic of nature, fight and flight. And if we don't understand it and we think there's a risk, well, ascribe a really high uh, risk to it and run as fast as you can because that means you get to talk about it the next day because the consequences for being wrong and just sticking around and seeing if that gorilla is hungry and going to rip your arms off is fatal so i think you know our little brains have been programmed over hundreds of thousands of years to behave like that and investing is no different and this is where for bitcoin because it's so difficult to understand there are so many oh there are so many um, areas that it draws in that you need to be proficient in to really understand bitcoin um it's very difficult to understand. It takes an enormous amount of work. And at the same time that, that it takes an enormous amount of work, you need to forget what you've known in traditional markets to actually understand this as a technology first and then think about what it looks like from a, a monetary network and an asset value perspective. So from a risk perspective, people ascribe way more risk to Bitcoin than what you know I ascribe to it because I've spent you know over well, probably close to 15,000 hours now staring at this problem and trying to figure it out and understand it. And from my understanding and the time that I've spent looking at it, I look at this and I think from a, you know, if I had to be a betting man, the number one thing I'd bet on as far as a sure bet goes would be that the sun will rise tomorrow. That is my number one bet that if I could have my bet, that would be the bet. My number two bet would be that basically a Bitcoin block will continue to be mined every 10 minutes and, uh, that's a bet I'd be happy to have as my second best bet. So if you do the work and you get to that point in time, you understand that Bitcoin, although it's wildly volatile because that's the price that we attach on top of the network, the risk of Bitcoin failing is very, very low because of its decentralized nature. And this is where going deep down that rabbit hole, the decentralized nature of, of Bitcoin and the network that it is means that it's going to be far more secure than anything else. And the problem is, is that, you know, we haven't been familiar as a species with decentralized networks. So it's very difficult for us to understand. And then from a volatility perspective, you know, that's putting risk aside, then volatility. People think that, you know, volatility is, is a problem, but volatility is the feature, not the bug, because volatility allows you to go up 170% in a year and still think that it could have gone up more by a lot more. And, you know, probably we're sitting here looking <clears throat> at what lies ahead and thinks, and I don't know about you, but I think that there's far more upside left in the next two years of what we've seen this year. So that's volatility being friendly to the upside. And at the same time, you don't get volatility the upside with having some drawdowns as well. And this is where people typically conflate the risk and volatility because they think when things drop that it's dead and the bubble has burst and there's no second go round at it. But as long as Bitcoin keeps working, people will understand what it is. 
more entrants will come back to the market and the price will come back up. So I don't think we've seen the end of, you know, 70, 80% drawdowns. I just think, you know, they're going to be a continued feature of the system because in order to get to the values that we think it can achieve, you need to have massive volatility. It's just skewed to the upside. So if yeah. you've got a long enough time frame, you don't have to worry about the, the drawdowns. You just hold on for another four years. And not only does it go back to the previous high, it'll go a lot further past it. 